questions that will be presented by our respective and uh, our guests. I mean, invited speakers, which is um, Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Noliza Katuk. Okay, thank you from UM. Thank you for. Um, uh, I mean, thank you for having your time to be with us and then uh, share your knowledge uh, in terms of journal for IJ, I, I mean, uh, for your JICT. So, um, looking at your background, um, Associate Professor Dr. Noliza Katu is actually a Chief Editor for Journal of Information and Communication Technology, JICT, and without um, Further ado, but I would like to clarify a bit. It's supposed to be the moderator is uh, our professor, associate professor, Dr. Uh, Samsul Arifin, but uh, he had another appointment with uh, JKPI today. So I'm just a substitute. <laughs> sorry, I'm just a substitute moderator. So I hope that uh, today we will gain something from associate professor. I would like to say thank you again. Um, we have about two sharing session. The session one is supposed to be partnerships for a sustainable future, which is uh, research collaborations in actions. And then under the session two is supposed to be beyond submissions, the general management experience. Both will be um, shared by our respective uh, speakers here. So, um, I'm confident that we will find today's engagements, I mean, the seminar informative are very engaging. And without further ado, I will um, leave the floor to our respective honor speaker to uh, share the, the session one topic. And I leave it to you, Associate Professor Dr. Noliza Kato. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Faraha. Um, let me, can, can you see my slide? Let me make it a uh, full screen. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank a faculty of uh, computing and Informa informatics, uh, University of Malaysia Sabah for inviting me to share, um, I think a little experience of myself. Uh, engaging with research in cybersecurity and as well as being the uh, general chief editor for JICT. So, um, my, I mean, my communication was with uh, Dr. Sam, Dr. Samsul. Um, we started actually knowing uh, each other in 2020 as part of our role as a deputy dean of uh, research and innovation. And since that, we're supporting uh, each other in terms of publications and research until recently he invited me to share a little, I mean, the knowledge and experience that I have related to um, research and also managing the journal. Okay. First of all, uh, University of Malaysia Sabah, I think uh, we visited UMS back in 2020, right before the COVID, okay? So, uh, I also have few friends there like um, Dr. Shamri and also Dr. Suraya and also have Dr. Rena as the um, my uh, student's external examiner uh, for PhD. So I think uh, University of Malaysia Sabah uh, with me is, I mean, I have a, a connection with you, with all, all of you. So for today, um, I'm going to share about uh, two things. Uh, the second uh, session would be on the journal. Um, and the first part is actually sharing on the partnership for a sustainable future. You probably uh, uh, wondering why I chose this topic. Um, you will later look at my affili affiliation currently. I'm actually um, conducting, I mean, um, doing another additional job, uh, administrative job at uh, University Utara Malaysia as a deputy director for global engagement for Center for International Affairs and Cooperation, University Utara Malaysia. And I'm also um, an associate professor in cybersecurity. Uh, at School of Computing. So during our, my presentation, if you have question, feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask question if you would like. Uh, you have something that you are not clear with my explanation. Okay. Um, next, uh, my presentation today on the first part here will cover um, 
a little bit information about me. What uh, what were the roles and skill that I obtained in the last 20 years? And then a little information about my research bubbles and then my research, uh, my security research and what will be next in 2024. And let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I uh, started joint University of Malaysia in 20 uh, in 2000. Um, right after I graduated from um, doing a bachelor in information technology. And then since that, I've been with UUM. And I did my master in uh, UTM in Master of Science in Computer Science, uh, specialization in information security. It was in 2002, I graduated in 2002, and then in 2008 until 2012, I did my PhD in Massey University, Auckland, New Zealand. So um, after returned from my study leave, so these are my roles that I've been uh, doing since um, 12 years, uh, sorry, 14 years, sorry, 12, uh, almost 11 to 12 years, okay? I back, uh, I mean, resume my work on 2012. And then since then, um, I become a lecturer and I become a researcher. And then I was appointed as a program coordinator for Master of Science in IT. That is the existing program where I manage the program curriculum review and so on. And in 19, 20, sorry, uh, 2019, I was appointed as the program coordinator for Master of Science in Cybersecurity. It was during that time a, a new program need to be proposed by the school and University of Utara Malaysia and uh, involved with um, developing the curriculum, getting the approval from um, the Senate and also the MQA and run the program. In 2002, I was appointed as a deputy dean of research and innovation. That was the time I get to know uh, Dr. Sam. And also at the same time, I'm also a general uh, editor in chief for Journal of Information and Communication Technology. Um, in 2000, mid 2003, I started a new role as international relations manager. At the same time, in 2002, I started my role as Ahli Panel Penilai MQA and also MBOT uh, for cybersecurity. And I'm also a book author currently uh, managing the role of um, Deputy Director for Global Engagement at the International Office of UUM. I'm also a book and also general reviewer and also be part of the research and grant reviewer. So these are uh, among the skills and roles that I've been um, exploring in the past, uh, I think, 24 years with UUM. And from these um, roles, I think it has developed me a lot in terms of research and being a lecturer. So uh, here, I would like to share with you what are the things that I did and I do in the research. Okay. So in terms of my research, I'll show you my research bubble. So uh, um, throughout the years, okay, from 2000, okay, until today, I've been doing um, cross disciplines research, I think, okay. So the, my, my main focus is actually in information system technology. I look into web technology, mobile technology, IOT and also the recent one is on blockchain, but the entire uh, scope of this um, information system technology, it also being applied in certain domain, for example, e-commerce, uh, disaster management, e-learning, uh, halal, uh, smart home, and also the recent one is on estate planning. Um, all this area of research, okay, uh, I look specifically into three aspects of security, which is uh, authentication, uh, detection, and also awareness. Authentication here referring to, for example, using simple 
um, credential, uh, password, and um, uh, user ID and password, or uh, multiple, I mean, multi factor credential, for example, using adding biometric features or smart card token, and so on. And also looking on uh, strengthening uh, the authentication schemes. Uh, in terms of detection, I also work with um, colleagues who are also doing uh, their research in AI, where we work on detecting certain types of attacks, specifically for intrusion detection systems. And recently, as our collaboration, I mean, UUM's collaboration with Cybersecurity Malaysia has established uh, in uh, in a program of Master of Science in Cybersecurity, we actually increasing our efforts um, in uh, doing awareness program among students and also community related to cybersecurity threats and attacks. So my research started, uh, if you look at uh, the bottom of my presentation here, you will see the years where I started uh, with all this uh, technology and also um, uh, topics, okay, as the e-commerce here was started like the one I did for my master thesis. It was back in 2000 and then uh, after I completed my master thesis, I looked into disaster management and then uh, as uh, doing my PhD, I look into e-learning and then right after completing my PhD, I look at the halal domain and Later, uh, in 2019, we look into smart home and in 2021, uh, we look into estate planning. This estate planning is actually um, how uh, we look into uh, inheriting uh, digital assets uh, to uh, uh, our family members. Okay, As we know that there are a lot of digital assets being introduced from day to day from like uh, e-wallet and also cryptocurrency. So there is a race in issues in how those um, assets, especially cryptocurrency, can be inherited to their family members after the death of the owner. So this is actually one of research that uh, uh, I'm currently doing with uh, colleagues uh, with the background of uh, Islamic finance. So um, back in 2003, uh, I look again into the e-learning, but for this time, it is actually looking into different perspective, which is embedding all the possible SDG uh, uh, sustainable development goals um, uh, elements like inclusivity and so on. But we specifically look into how uh, we could, for example, uh, uh, close the gap between genders, girl and boys in learning cybersecurity and so on. So apart uh, for for this one, um, using the same research, research as well, uh, I've started in 2000 with a slap, uh, which is uh, a scholarship for doing my master. And then I also be a team of um, an IRPA grant, I think if uh, you started your career is about uh, uh, about 20, uh, 2000. Uh, you probably still remember what is the IRPA grant. I think that's one grant uh, offered by Mosti during that time. And it was um, changed later. Their name to, I think, is Science or something in late uh, 2010. Okay. And also, uh, we obtained one also FRGS. Uh, here is the, I mean, the IRPA and the FRGS, we focuses on disaster management. That research, uh, IRPA, FRGS, yes, another one is also, I've forgotten to mention, we also involved in uh, one of the uh, grants here. Okay. Um, so the disaster management here, we started very early in 2005. Uh, if you still remember, uh, Professor Emeritus, uh, Dr. Kurohana, she was the one uh, started on disaster management research, and I joined her team uh, for a few grants. Okay. And then um, in 2008, we look into, uh, I look into e-learning research uh, 
it's still embed within the uh, embedding the uh, elements of uh, security, uh, including uh, either one of this one. Okay, so and then by 2013, uh, during that time, Mohi has offered one grant, which is on Rex. Okay, and also in 2016, I have one uh, grant on Halal. And also an international grant with Universitas Pasundan doing the same concept of halal. And in 2019, we have another grant on smart home and also one grant on FRGS. And in 2021, we all uh, we have a FRGS. So we um, in recent FRGS called 2024, I also submitted um, an application, and I hope that. Uh, we still have chance, I mean, to get that uh, grant. Because I know that today, um, if you realize that having, I mean, applying for FRGS is quite tough also. So that's why we, I mean, have to look into the alternatives for uh, FRGS and look for, for example, the other national and international grants um, uh, to apply. And in most cases, applying those grants require partnership. Uh, so that's why, uh, I, I try to align my presentation with the type, I mean, the needs for current uh, research. All right. Um, next, um, my security research basically involved with um, from starting in 2000 and in year 2000, we look into encryption algorithms, specifically into enhancing the message digest and also Towards the year 2020, we look into research to make them uh, to make the encryption algorithm more lightweight, suitable for the uh, modern devices, for example, smartphones and also tablets. So we also, I mean, me myself with the students and the, uh, the research teams also look into authentication schemes, uh, particularly looking at the implementation of biometric and also multi-factor biometric. Um, I have one research on uh, fingerprint and also a facial image. And this, uh, I mean, uh, apart from these authentication schemes, I also look at uh, interested at doing um, attack detection uh, using certain um, AI uh, techniques. So this basically the three top three um, research uh, uh, project uh, in uh, fundamental nature. But recently, as we look into the grant call, uh, we also need to look into the research that um, uh, focus on the society and also applied whatever apply, uh, fundamental research that we have into the society to so that they will have the benefits from the output of uh, the research that we did. So uh, now um, I'm started on um, doing cybersecurity awareness research and also project. This is has also the relationship with the program uh, that uh, we offer at UUM, which is Master of Science in Cybersecurity. And this program is actually focusing uh, aligned with our university's uh, niche area, which is business and management. So uh, managing cybersecurity is the top or the main uh, educational objective for the program. So one aspect of having a management managerial aspect of cybersecurity is to look into the cybersecurity awareness. Okay. In terms of methodologies, um, I conducted um, uh, actually involved with uh, a few uh, this all the listed methodologies. Okay, so uh, this I mean uh, exploring various types of research methodologies is actually uh, good for us to understand the differences between uh, or the, the variety um, that we could explore in computer science research. For example, this experimental study, I would say that experimental study is actually looking at the uh, factor of comparing uh, the result between two groups. Uh, it could be a human 
uh, or maybe data involving non-human, okay? So, for example, I started the experimental study is uh, to compare on um, during my PhD to compare and two groups on the effects of how um, students would uh, students experience in using um, uh, an a, an online learning system. Uh, basically, we I compared on uh, two methods of presenting um, content to the uh, learners in terms of sequential and also uh, unsequential. Sequential means uh, displaying uh, the content or delivering the content to the uh, learners in terms of uh, sequential order and um, also comparing the outcomes or their uh, learning outcomes uh, with the students who are not doing uh, or not involving with uh, the sequential, which is uh, the opposite of it, uh, which is a dynamic, uh, I call it as a dynamic sequencing, where uh, students can have uh, uh, the order of the learning content based on their uh, preference. So when we have a two different groups, uh, it could be uh, between subject design or within subject design, we compare the outcome of the uh, outcome or the uh, expected um, variable that we measure. So I also involved with uh, research related to observation. Uh, this is a little bit qualitative and look into how uh, an individual uh, respond to certain um, certain messages. The, this observation is actually involved in, uh, when I applied uh, uh, an internal UUM research grant, uh, which is related to sort of scholarship of teaching and learning. So uh, as, the, as the researchers who are doing research among uh, on their own students, uh, we have to carefully observe our students um, respond to certain um, intervention. So that intervention is the new, uh, not the new, uh, uh, an approach that we apply in our classroom and how we uh, we measure how the students responds on uh, the intervention that we propose in the classroom. Um, I also conducted um, survey. So this survey, I, I think it's in. Um, Quite a number of studies, in, including the consultation project uh, that we have uh, for the national, which is surveying um, the uh, uh, primary school students' uh, cybersecurity awareness. That is a project, a collaboration project uh, between UUM and also Cybersecurity Malaysia to look into how uh, primary students' level of awareness in terms of certain types of attack. Okay, so I also conducted um, research related to the interview. When we, I mean, uh, as I uh, move from the uh, technical uh, computer science research into uh, human related computer science uh, research, which is on cybersecurity awareness. So it also involved a lot of interview session to understand certain uh, phenomenon or certain situation or certain problems. And then we conducted, for example, content analysis and so on to understand what actually the reason of uh, having some uh, some sort of issues at program. And also conducted research related to the simulation and th that simulation is mostly on the fundamental research grant, FRGS, where uh, those research uh, actually were actually being done by the PhD students. Um, so they uh, look into the performance of the encryption algorithms and the performance of um, uh, authentication schemes. So I think the the variation, the the variety of uh, methodologies in the research is also maybe would lead us to get some idea on uh, research that we could explore or the area we could explore. Right. Um, next, um, currently uh, in 2024, 
um, I'm conducting a fishing awareness program for UUM students. This is a, a, a recent grant, internal recent grant that I obtained uh, through the Graduate Development Research Grant Scheme by um, Jabatan Hal Ehwal, Pelajar dan Alumni UUM. So basically, it's um, one one year project that intend to measure uh, UUM students' level awareness or le level of awareness towards uh, phishing attacks, and it is actually conducted in um, three phases, which is the first phase is in doing the survey, uh, and the second phase is to uh, develop the micro credential content, and the third phase is actually to train the students uh, using the uh, micro credential content. And we look into having an analysis and suggest to the HEPA what is the current level of students' um, uh, fishing awareness. Uh, next, um, I would like to share a little bit about why cybersecurity awareness becomes important. For, for today's presentation and my sharing session, I uh, specifically focus on cybersecurity awareness. So why is it become important? Anyone knows? Why cybersecurity awareness, uh, cybersecurity awareness become important? Anyone, uh, anyone would like to share their views? Um, hello. Yeah. Uh, for, from my opinion, hi, I'm Aino Hafiza. Uh, so hi. from my opinion, cybersecurity is important because now we have a lot of new technologies, especially mm -hmm. when we're using smartphone, we have our own PCs, laptops and everything. So we need to be aware that actually we are being monitored by, especially with the mm -hmm. social medias and so on. So that's why we need to be aware and it becomes important because we, we just say that we can say that we are already being monitored by all these Facebook, Google, and so on. So, um, uh, no matter what, wherever mm -hmm. we go, actually, we are not safe because we are exposed with all of these uh, technologies now. That's what, uh, from my opinion. Yeah. yeah, very true. Very true. That's one, one of the reasons. That's very true. Any other answer that uh, you would like to share for for from um, from the floor? Any would like to share? Anyone else? Why cybersecurity awareness become important? I think there's a in the chat box mentioned about the personal data hacking from I Win. Ah, thank you. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, true reason. But there's another important reason about it. Anyone would like to try? Anyone? Uh, okay. Let 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 me explain here with the next slide because people are the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain. Um, whether you agree or not with me, okay. So. Uh, research has proven it, okay? Although an organization or individual, they use advanced technological protection. If, if the we, I mean the users uh, or the people who are using the system are not actually aware of um, the security threats, uh, that advanced uh, technological protection is actually useless. Uh, that's the easiest, I mean, the easiest word to explain that. Because um, in many cases, uh, nowadays, hackers or malicious person who uh, have certain um, uh, aims in, uh, in, do it, in attacking organization or businesses, uh, they do not have to go through, I mean, hacking or breaking the code or, or whatsoever protection. They can simply go to, uh, uh, for example, an employee for an organization doing a phishing attack and then pretend to be someone um, uh, as a legal entity of the organization getting password and so on. So that is, is actually easier. Even we put like um, 
uh, strong firewall, uh, strong antivirus, and so on. Those things are actually um, comes in the second place. So the first place is actually to increase people's awareness. People here is whoever the stakeholders being around an organization uh, or an entity. Uh, those people is actually giving uh, some level of risk to the organization. Therefore, they have to undergo certain cybersecurity awareness training. So today, cybersecurity awareness training has become an important um, component of uh, recruiting employees. Okay, so in many organization, um, those who have uh, additional cybersecurity awareness training would be highly likely to be recruited as as uh, compared to those who have not cybersecurity uh, who have not undergoing any cybersecurity training well, the main reason of having this is because like um the company would uh, would uh, i mean reduce the risk of being um exposed to certain cybersecurity attacks when they have uh, a pool of employees uh who are aware of the certain attacks okay so uh, that's one of the reason why cybersecurity awareness becomes so important today so we if we look at here the statement here um th this statement people are the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain that is very true uh in 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 i mean in any organization uh attackers does uh attackers will not have to go into breaking certain password and so on sorry and they can simply uh penetrate uh penetrating or manipulating the employees uh especially those who will highly likely be easily to manipulate it okay so those who are not aware and sometimes who are actually trusting other people um in a high degree, for example, we don't we allow people to tailgate us and so on. Uh, using, I mean, if we have like access card, uh, uh, to uh, using access card to access certain rooms, and then we don't know her, but uh, we don't know her, and she, uh, she claimed like she is also the same uh, staff of the same building, and we also we simply allow her to uh, to get into the. Uh, building so that's sort of like uh, tailgating and physical attack they get into the building so there are a lot of many others um, other types of um, way uh, people are doing um, um, we call this as a phishing or social engineering okay so um, why is this uh, cybersecurity awareness become so important because the social engineering attacks today are become more complex and advanced from day to day. If you realize they always have a new trick, uh, for, for example, calling us, hello, I'm from, um, uh, for example, TNB, you have an outstanding uh, bill. Uh, and then, yeah, some things that actually randomly uh, being uh, sent to us and we sometimes actually uh, believe that that is actually the true information. So that's is the, the the need for having uh, or educate um, people on um, the advances that uh, attackers use to uh, uh, use to um, launch their social engineering attacks. Uh, so apart from that as well. Um, it also due to the lack of awareness and training um, uh, as the technology is advancing very rapidly uh, from day to day. We have a new technology. If we see that in 2000 and in, in the year 2000, it was like a very uh, what old phone. It's yeah, the, the time that uh, we started using the phone is just for doing a voice call and then a few late few years after that, we are able to send text messages and then we are able to send multimedia messages. And nowadays we have a plenty of uh, social media platform where we share our information uh, on that platform. And people are now lack of um, maybe knowledge uh, and also their personal awareness towards certain attacks uh, in uh, the cyber world. So another thing is due to the weak password management. Um, 
we have like uh, one in 10 years ago, it has uh, an, a new terminology. They said that password fatigue, whereby uh, we uh, actually um, having too much password to remember because of we accessing various web based applications. And later when they're introducing the uh, smartphone, we have various uh, mobile application installed in our smartphone and we are kind of rem uh, having a uh, uh, we are having a practice like uh, using one password for every uh, types of application that we use which is that is one of the um, one of the uh, risks that uh, uh, maybe okay maybe lead to uh, certain types of attacks um, we also have like advances in uh, malware whereby malware can can uh, around I mean can be spread uh, or through emails or through text messaging and so on and it also have one one I mean possibly have insider threats where people inside an organization uh, itself can be uh, a threat to the uh, organization okay and also another challenge that lead to this situation is because of bring your own device and also remote call sorry remote work so by having the bring your own device it's difficult to monitor what's inside our own uh, our staff a laptop whether the the laptop is maintained properly in terms of the um uh, software updates uh, what are being used uh, i mean the so what the computer being used and so on so um, i mean uh, after the uh, covid-19 pandemic we are actually working from home and this is also increasing the challenge that uh, we face in terms of cybersecurity awareness because um, within the uh, organization network parameter, it can be easily, easily observed. But when it beyond the uh, organization uh, network parameter, uh, their activity are difficult to, uh, employees activity are difficult to observe. So. Based on this situation, we see that social engineering attacks, okay, such as phishing, pretexting, and baiting, exploiting, it's exploit actually human psychology and trust uh, rather than technical vulnerabilities, okay? So I believe in many organizations, they put the top priority on having technical protection, which is, of course, it is important. For example, to have the software updates, to have, to have all the application and software up to date, uh, to install, for example, um, uh, anti-virus uh, software and so on. But here, deceiving individuals into sharing sensitive information, they usually simply clicking on malicious link or performing actions that uh, compromise the security of the organization. So most advanced uh, cybersecurity technologies actually cannot entirely prevent social engineering attacks if individuals are not adequately trained to recognize and respond to them. So organization must complement their technological defenses um, with uh, robust uh, cybersecurity awareness and training programs. So uh, with that alignment, um, School of Computing University of Thailand Malaysia actually works with Cybersecurity Malaysia in F offering the program Master of Science in Cybersecurity. So in this program, we actually embedded two professional certification uh, to the students. The first one is actually Certified Cybersecurity Awareness Manager or CSAM. And the second one is Certified Information Security Management System, which is ISO uh, IEC 27-1-2013 Auditor, which is CIS, CISMS Auditor. So uh, the second one is actually under revision for the new version. So uh, during the graduate graduation, I mean, students who enroll graduated from this program will uh, not have not only having the, their master degree, but also being certified in two of these um, uh, certification. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm sharing uh, the last part of my uh, slides in this first topic, which is on the what's next in 2024. So I would like to invite uh, colleagues and friends from uh, UMS to work together with me um, on looking into certain uh, topic, which is 
basically uh, i'm i'm focusing on internet of things and also blockchain blockchain for this coming years and also look into specifically on e-learning system and smart home and um, i'm also interested on looking on the inclusivity aspect of uh project um so when we talk about in inclusivity here we might look into how to reduce the gap between genders how to reduce the gap between uh low income uh, individual or uh high income society uh but the work uh, look is actually within the security aspect that we may look into for example of education we may look into detection of certain attacks and we can also look specifically into the awareness so um in uh if you would like to uh collaborate so i would actually um invite you to join maybe to discuss uh, on uh, one of the topic here right um what we can explore here um we might look into the joint research project where it's actually good for promoting diversity uh, we might have different views on certain topics and by combining the different views we might agree on one uh, one um point that we uh would have better uh, perspective of research. And then we might also look into co-authored co publications, which we actually uh, increase the impact and uh, allow for wider co coverage of our publication. Uh, we might also look into grant proposals, uh, which um, have a higher chance of uh, success uh, when we collaborate okay between different institutions and between different countries as well and we might also look into joint supervision of students for example here students will benefit from the expertise and resources available at multiple institution and promote collaboration between research groups mm -hmm. and um i'm also inviting everyone of you to uh, to have um cross institutional research uh, through uh, collaboration between researchers from academic uh, different academic institution so this is actually to i mean develop networking and then also to uh, learn from each other that's one of i mean my my views of having the cross institutional and we can see that benefits, which is uh, we ha will have a diverse perspective and we could expand our network. We will increase the impact of our research and also we will have the opportunities to learn from each other. Um, as I said earlier, um, I'm, I'm actually um, um, would like to promote to um, friends from UMS to collaborate uh, so that we will have um opportunity to work together and look into a uh, different perspective of research and share what's the share our differences and be uh learn from each other to uh have like one mutual uh understanding on certain topics so uh we i also to uh i would like to also invite um uh, UMS friends to partnering with University of Tara Malaysia uh, on exploring some international grants. Uh, in most uh, international grants recently uh, released their call for applicants. Uh, I saw that although international national grant is also looking for uh, collaborators, they are not uh, look. They are not. I mean. The grants will require us to find partners, whether local or international. So for me, uh, initially finding partners could be challenging. I don't know whether you agree with this one or not. Anyone would like to share their opinions on finding partners uh, to apply for national or international grants? Is that easy for you or is that challenging or hard? Anyway, personally, it's very challenging. 
Yes, true. Anyone else? Maybe uh, I uh, some. I mean, uh, one of our. I mean, uh, here, someone here will have uh, already have experience uh, exploring uh, international grants and finding partners. Anyone? Maybe could share tips as well. Um, uh, as a uh, me, my role is as a deputy director for global engagement. Uh, my role is actually connecting UUM staff with international partners, with it, which is very challenging. Uh, so I personally started um, uh, exploring international grants here in two thousand and one and 2002 but finding partners is very challenging unless we we have actually started um, some uh, collaboration works um, maybe before the application of the grant so that um, the chances of having uh, mutual understanding sharing and so on would be easier so only this year i managed to get a partner from italy to apply for erasmus plus uh, after two years working together on like two or three projects, uh, mainly on uh, knowledge sharing and also uh, publication. So this year, I hope uh, it is successful. I don't know. Uh, the Erasmus Plus is focused on the key area one on the ICM uh, International um, I, 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 um, Mobility Grant, the KA. 171 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so that's very difficult to find partners. So, uh, for every call for international grants, um, at least we have to have a, a, a partner, either industry, non, that's not necessarily local, it could be international. And um, that is nowadays become um, a requirement for applying a grant if you I don't know if you agree on with me or not, but looking at the national grant as well, when we look at the recent FRGS, they require us to have like, I mean, when it comes to the evaluation, I mean, grants with local with national collaborators will be high will have the chances to have to be to be highly recommended as compared to those who have uh, no national collaborators, especially on the industry collaboration. So it is not actually uh, the international, but the local grants is also moving towards that. So that's why I think um, my topic of uh, presentation and sharing today is actually relevant. Am I right? So we have to make friends actually with uh, with others in order to apply for certain research grant. Okay, so I would like to invite of, uh, all of you to join. Okay, let's start the journey. Uh, uh, if you would like to connect with other members in University of Utara, Malaysia, particularly the School of Computing, if you have a, stop, a specific topic that you would like to do, I will be able to connect you with them. Okay, so uh, feel free to contact me. And the the easiest uh, way to get started is actually to go authored publication. That, that's the fastest way in um, establishing establishing collaboration. We might start with um, it could be uh, if you ask on co authored publication, there could be different ways of doing it. One is, for example, uh, we shared um, we we plan from the beginning on certain topic and we divide uh, the content, for example, into the members that we invited in the team. Or sometimes um, we also have a model like uh, we have uh, the uh, draft of the research and we don't have the funding to publish papers in the open access journal. So we we are funding for people who have fun uh, to pay for the open access journal. And it could also based on, for example, supervision of the students who we think that um, they have certain expertise to contribute. They might have also lead to certain co-authored publication. Okay, so that's all for my uh, first session. I mean, on the uh, on the research, if you have questions or you have views to share with uh, all the audience, you're welcome to share. 
Okay, thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Noliza Katuk, for such engaging sharing. I believe um, I wish to thank you also for inviting us from UMS uh, to partake uh, for the uh, grant research collaborations and so on. I believe there might some of the audience um, interested to collaborate. And so I would like to open the floor. We have about 10 minutes for Q&A sessions. Uh, I will open the floor for everyone to uh, ask something which is uh, interest to everyone related to the session one topic. So you may switch on your mic and proceed with the questions. Thank you. Or you can just provide your questions on the chat box and I can read directly from there. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, so, sure. yeah. <laughs> I think they're trying to create the questions probably. So I hope that there will be uh, questions for 10 minute sessions here. But before, uh, while we're waiting for the questions, I have uh, a question which is I would like to know about uh, SDG and related to the collaborations of. Uh, mm -hmm research and grants. So my question is, uh, how can we ensure that our collaborative research aligns with the uh, SDG goals? Okay. Uh, in certain research call, uh, they highlighted uh, certain SDGs that um, uh, researchers should focus. For example, in international grants, uh, they always promote inclusivity, which is aligned to, I think, uh, which SDG uh, in that in, in inclusivity. And uh, based on my experience talking with uh, colleagues from other universities, friends from other universities, I also realized that every university, they have their own specific focus of SDG, which I think um, as a member of certain universities, we uh, we actually should align our research to our university's uh, SDGs. As for, for example, UUM, we are focusing specialized on uh, SDG um, uh, two. Uh, for, sorry, SDG one or SDG two, which is focusing on uh, reducing poverty, uh, providing quality education. Uh, reducing, uh, I mean, inclusivity, smart city, and also uh, partnership. Uh, we have like five focus focus of um, SDG, and this SDG is actually also aligned with one of the, if I'm not mistaken, whether it's QS or THE ranking. Uh, so uh, when we align our research uh, to this, uh, our university's focus of SDG. So that uh, it is easier to support the entire university's um, uh, aim or uh, focus. Okay, um, it is depends. Maybe I, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe UMS has specific on the focus of the that SDG. Sorry, sorry. I okay. I'm not sure either actually, but okay. there's supposed to be one. Yeah, I mean, uh, if uh, in, for example, in UUM, um, we, we work together towards that uh, university's ranking and we have our own focus on SDG. So we, we are not focusing on all the, all the uh, SDGs, but we're selecting the most five that are relevant. For example, the, as I said just now, providing quality education, um, uh, in, uh, I mean, Reducing the poverty, no poverty, and then um, reducing the gap between genders and uh, societies, uh, developing smart communities, and also um, smart partnership. Uh, that's one of the, the SDG. So I think the same also uh, similar to the other universities, for example. Uh, in a couple of um, uh, weeks ago, I talked to uh, a friends from USM. They also focus and align their research to that that SDG. So we 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 kind of having like um, 
working together to support that SDG so that our university would, I mean, uh, appear to to have a strength on that particular SDG. Uh, I hope it answer uh, your question, Dr. Faraha. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Doctor. Uh, that I believe it's answered the questions. Uh, for now, actually, there's a SDG which is lined by the UMS, but uh, we'll try to look into that as also. Um, yeah, we have about five minutes left. I uh, would like to open the floor for any questions related to the topics. Of course, there will be an attendance link <laughs> that will be shared later. So, um, any any participants would like to. Uh, Provide questions. You may provide your questions on the chat box also. Thank you. Or oh, maybe you have your own views. The audience have different views with, I mean, contradict with my views uh, in my presentation just now. We might also get, could discuss that. Anyone would like to share opinions related to the topic as well? Can provide, uh, can switch on the mic. Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Uh, can you hear my voice? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm Azlina from UMS. So uh, I don't really have a cute question, but I just want to ask for your opinion. Since I'm a new lecturer, so do you have any advice for a newcomer like me in terms of collaborations? Or uh, I mean, like, we need to find grant. So, do you have any uh, specific uh, requirements or maybe element that we need for us uh, to gain a strong uh, collaboration in terms of research? Okay, so uh, uh, that's I think um, a good question where I reflect back when um, in 2000, in year 2000, where I started my job uh, as as a tutor and also as a researcher, if during that time doing research was thought like a necessity necessity to, as today, I mean, uh, doing research um, during that time is based on uh, whoever uh, interested uh, in exploring doing research, then um, we would. Uh, go for that. Okay, so uh, if I would like to share my experience, I started doing research is uh, based on I mean mentorship. Uh, I started my career as a junior lecturer uh, in two thousand and two, and luckily during that time, if you know uh, Professor Doctor Kurohana uh, Emeritus Doctor Kurohana, she was the one. Um, one of my mentor. Uh, so we started our research um, by by the small grant. So I think in terms, if you get back to your situation just now, it is good if you can work with your uh, senior. I mean, uh, senior professor, for example, and to look at the um, style of how they do the research, how they do col collaborate. But if you have your own uh, networking which is, that's also an advantage, but uh, learning from a senior actually giving you some sort of um, experience and different views on how um, doing research and to get started with uh, our new career as a, a young or junior lecturer. But if let's say you are studying abroad, for example, uh, you might involve your friends or your supervisor from uh, the previous university. Invite them to be uh, or con reconnect with them uh, to um, uh, to collaborate. As I said just now, it's easier to start with uh, doing co-authorship of publication as compared to apply of grant because we we does we are not actually having the or establishing trust with our new friends. Otherwise, sometimes there are also ways of actually being randomly searching for maybe suitable partners at, I mean, uh, who could actually help us to be or to train us to or to include us as their one of the team members. 
sometimes the uh, this technique is also working for certain people but uh, it might uh, need you uh, some um, persistence in doing that sometimes when the first time you approach somebody for example the, the first person they he or she uh, did not reply so don't give up try again to find some uh, lecturers or professors to collaborate and to learn more uh, that's one of the tips that I can give, but uh, it's always need uh, some um, uh, persistence in our effort. Although it's a small, when we keep we doing it um, in uh, in consistently, we might be able to get connection with that. I hope I will answer your question. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. It's it's answering my questions. Okay, uh, thank you. I think we reached the end points of our session one is already.